Lucas with MTV Solutions, and today we've had a request for the configuration of an LDAP server. It's using one single directory at one location to give a phone directory to all of your phones at once. Once the configuration gets to your phone, you only have to ch make changes in one location and all of the phones pick up on that. So you, you don't have to re-push a configuration with every change that you make. You simply make the change in one place and all the phones just get it right away. So let's take a look at what that looks like and uh, and see if you have any questions. Uh, get rid of me here. We're going to start with a grand screen PBX. The PBX will host the LDAP server all on its own. You don't need a separate one. Here I'm in zero config to show you that we're going to use um, this phone here. It's a extension 1001 and it is using the beta firmware right now for a 2170. So that phone is, is over here on this tab and you can see it's connected, registered, and it's a working phone. If we click on phone book and LDAP, you can see that everything right now is blank. We could come here and configure this by hand um, for each phone individually if you wanted, but we would rather push it to as many phones as we want instantly. So we're gonna show you how to do that. Um, back on the PBX, you go to settings and LDAP server. This is already configured, already works right out of the box, um, but the configuration is not automatically pushed to the phones. The configuration will be listed on this screen um, if you need uh, to change passwords, things like that. From, from, from the start, just leave all of that normal. Don't change anything. Go down to where it says LDAP phone book. This is where you can create new phone books. So right off the bat, you get this one. It's not deletable. It's permanent. It shows the, the extensions on the system. So as you add an extension to your PBX, it comes into here. If I hit edit, we can see those extensions and what they show. The emails that we put in show up, the first name, last name shows up. Um, all that information will show up in here. But all we need to put in, if we make our own, is the account number as, as whatever the extension is or phone number and the caller ID name. So what you want to show up. So if you click add phone, add here, you will add a phone book that you can name yourself. So if this was Bob's phone book, we'll name it Bob's. We'll get rid of the apostrophe. We'll just name it Bob. And you can see down here, it creates the phone book DN, it's called, which names, names the phone book. And that's what this part is, the name of that specific phone book. And this part basically says it's on this, this PBX. So when we save that, we have a phone book named Bob. We can then add, add to Bob, and we'll add 507-555-1212, and we will name it info. And we'll click add. Now we can add all this stuff, I'm not going to, but it's all available. All you need to add is those two things. It'll show up over here, and you can save all. You can add as many new contacts as you want. I've also added this phone book previously. I named it N2VS. And that one has our business number as well as our uh, my personal uh, DID. So that, that's the one that goes straight to my phone. So I added both of those and then saved it so that you can see there was three different phone books that I've added here. If you look below, it'll show LDAP client configurations, examples of client configurations, as well as an example of what a grand screen phone might look like. This is the one we're gonna use here. So you can read through this if you want. I took a couple of screenshots that I have listed over here so that we know what we're typing in. And uh, and we'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to apply these changes. We're going to take our screenshots and we're going to create a template. So I could take this information here, like I said, and apply it to straight to the phone and it would work. But we want to push it to multiple phones. So we're going to go back now to PBX and the zero config section because we pushed 
all of our configurations via zero, zero config, all of the extensions, and we're going to create a global template. So this is a template that can be pushed to anyone, that any phone, it doesn't have to be a specific phone, any grand screen phone, I should say. You create your template name, whatever you want to call it, and give it a description, whatever you want to call it, to make it active. And in here, you will select the phone book to add. So we're going to go to contact list, LDAP phone book, directory. We're going to add that option. It's going to give us all those same settings that we saw on the Grandstream phone. And we're going to configure each one. Now, if we change this from manual to PBX, PBX will give us that one phone book with all the extensions. That one will, is there by default every time and you can select it and push it. We can select the NTVS one I made and just push those two numbers or the Bob one we just created. I prefer to choose manual. For the IP address, you type in the IP address of the phone, 10 dot, whatever. I'm not going to do it here. And we go through in the base DNN, base DN username. These all can be found on that configuration page. Here's the screenshot, all this stuff. Your base DN, it gives some examples. Username, leave it blank. Password, leave it blank. The LDAP name attributes, let's look at that real quick. It actually shows up here under name attribute, not LDAP name attribute. So I usually go through this and I just tab from place to base. I get the address, I get the next one, the next one. The number filter, then I go and look. What is my number filter supposed to be? Account number equals percent with parentheses on the sides of it. I type that in or copy and paste that in exactly as it shows. Um, there are other things you can put in here other than this. The number filter will, this lets you know what area of the stuff that you entered in will be filtered by the number filter. And it will be specifically that, that area. I don't know if I'm saying that right for you. The LDAP name filter is another one. When, when you try to filter by name, the caller ID name is the section that it will use. When you try to type something in to the LDAP name to search for it, what sections should it look for? It's going to look through the caller ID name section. It's going to look through the email section, the department section, the first name section and the last name section for whatever you typed in. So if you just put caller ID name in the name attribute section, it will only search through the caller ID names. But if you put all of these in with a space between them, it'll search through every section. Same with the numbers. But when it pops up and you see what, what your results actually are, this is the, the specific section that it will sort by. So you'll see your list of numbers sorted by account number. But when you do type in a number, it will search through all of the different numbers to find that number. I hope that makes sense. We're going to look at it in a little more detailed way. The other picture I took a screenshot of was this, the base DNN. The base DN, not DNN. DC equals PBX, DC equals COM. The PBX DNN, I said it again, the PBX DN specifically uses that phone book. So we're going to look at the one I already created and see what it looks like. I created a template called LDAP All, and it looks like this. I typed in the name, the address of the PBX, the port number was 389, we left that default. Then for here, I typed in DC equals PBX, DC equals COM. This covers every directory that I have in here. All the phones will have access to every single directory. If I want them to have access to a specific directory, I would put that first little tidbit in there, that name of my directory, in this case, OU equals N2VS. So if I wanted just the, just the N2VS directory to be available, I would do this. Put a comma, and that would give just the NTVS directory onto that system. But by 
by leaving that off and leaving DC equals PBX DC equals com, it lets every directory be accessed. We leave the username and password blank. I put the number filter as what was listed, the, call, the name filter as what was listed. Version, default again, leave that alone. I filled in the name attribute, the number attribute, the display name, all based on what those recommendations were. And the rest is all default. Now, the bottom three are what you would use to make it show LDAP directory stuff when a call comes in or when a call is going out, um, that kind of thing. And uh, the lookup display name, I believe, shows you what's on your screen, what, what piece you want to see on your screen when that happens. We're not going to mess with that today, but you can play around with that if you want. Messing with these will not change the ability of your phone to be able to access the LDAP directory. So you get done with your, your template and you save it. I've already done that and I have it. LDAP, LDAP all is what I named it. So we have our global template, it's called LDAP all. It is active. Now we have to push it to the phone. So again, use our phone. We're going to log into it. I hit caps lock by accident. There we go. And we're going to see that there's currently no configuration in here. So we're going to go to our zero config on the PBX. We're going to go to that phone and edit, edit that phone. All we've done on this phone is applied an extension. Now we're going to go to the advanced tab and go down to, oh, it did grab all of this configuration from the default model template that I made. So I, I will show that in another video. But now we're going to also apply a global template to it. The one we're going to apply is called LDAP all. So we select that template and hit the plus sign next to it. Puts it into the selected templates. You can have more than, uh, than one template applied. So now this phone will grab its model template stuff, which is all the stuff you see here, but it will also grab this. So it's now adding that into it. And we're going to save that. As soon as I save it, sometimes it'll prompt you to push that configuration, sometimes it won't. In this case, if I refresh, we can see that nothing's been pushed lately. So we're going to push that information by hitting the update button over here. This will tell and send a notify to the phone to update the settings of this device. So we're going to send the notify. Now if I refresh this little screen, it should tell us, yep, it created the config and sent it to the phone as of our current time. The phone does not need to reboot to get this configuration. So if I refresh the screen over here, it might make me re-log in. Yep. We can now see all that configuration got pushed. Now here's the bug. Right now, in the, I'm using the beta firmware for the phone and the beta firmware for the phone system. And it should push that base DNN, base DN, but instead it pushed the word manual. That's a bug. That should not be there. What it should be is this, DC equals PBX, DC equals COM. That's the base DN that should have been pushed. So in this case, I'm going to switch that manually. DC. What was it? Is DC equals PBX, DC equals COM. PBX, COM. So always double check at least your test one to make sure that everything's working as it should. Um, that'll get fixed in a future patch. But everything else pushed fine. The username and password are blank, count number. It's color ID name, version 3 was default, these three, and here's the one, uh, sort results. All this stuff is default. LDAP lookup using incoming calls and outgoing calls, lookup display name, figures the display name when LDAP looks up the name for incoming and outgoing, 
and it must be a subset of the LDAP name attributes. So in this case, the only name attribute we use is caller ID name, so that's what it would have to be. So if you had multiple things for the attributes, you could pick one of them to show. So in this case, we're going to save and apply it. Now, typically, once you push the configuration and the phone gets it, it'll just work. You don't have to come in here and change anything. We had to change this one just because of a bug. So we're going to take a look at the phone now and see what it looks like. I'm going to get the screen back up. Hello. And let's take a look. I'm going to grab this guy here. See if I can do this without making you sick. All right, here's our phone. We're going to go into here and look at the contacts. You go down to LDAP directory. You guys can see that. There we go. And we're going to do a search. So I'm going to type in 507. There were three different directories in there. And two of the directories had 507 in it. I hit search. It shows us the info one, which was in our test directory. And it shows us the numbers that were in the NGBS directory as well. It shows both of them at the same time. You just have to search something. We backspace that and search 100, which is the start of all the 1,000 extensions. And hit search. It will show us all of the 1,000 extensions, which were in the base PBX directory. So it gives us all directories constantly. And you can access any of them. And it was instant. The phone did not need to reboot. The phone got the information we entered. And we were good to go. So I hope that's been helpful. I know it's a, a long video, but uh, making LDAP work isn't too complicated. Um, you don't need to know all the details of what everything means to even make it work. You just need to know what to punch where. The, uh, the key one is knowing that you can specify one phone book or all of the phone books. Um, unfortunately, at this time, I don't believe there's a way to show the whole phone book in advance. You have to know what you're looking for when you use it. You, uh, you type in a name, a start of a name, a piece of a name and it will search through the entire name of everything you have listed there to see if it can find it. But uh, same with phone numbers. You can type in a piece of the phone number and it will show all of the phone numbers that have that piece in it. But you can't just say, show me marketing department, show me um, you know, sales department and, and get a list of sales, and get a list of marketing, unless you've labeled things accordingly. And that's where those extra slots can come in. You kind of just play with it and uh, and see how you want to do it, how you want it to work. And then there's lots of little options you can take on. So I hope this was helpful. If you uh, have any questions, toss me an email, a message. Don't, don't hesitate to subscribe um, so you get the, the new videos that come out. If you have any ideas for videos, please let me know, and I'd be uh, happy to make some. So again, this is Lucas with N2V Solution, and, uh, thanks, for, and thanks for watching.